In this video, we'll be taking a look at a bunch of super useful tips and tricks we think you should try out with Android 13. First up, when copying text or an image you want to paste somewhere, you'll get this little pop-up. Tapping this will allow you to edit what you copied however you'd like, and when you hit done, you'll be good to go to paste wherever needed. If you prefer not to use the camera application to scan QR codes, Google added a toggle for this in quick settings you can use instead. And of course, you can move this toggle anywhere you want. It's nice having multiple ways to scan codes. If you're not a fan of this rather large clock on your always on display, you can swap it out for the smaller one that shows up when you get notifications. Head into display settings, lock screen, and disable the double line clock. This will give you the smaller, more minimal clock at all times. What is probably the coolest way to activate the flashlight, double tapping the back of the phone. Head over into the system settings, go to gestures, quick tap to start actions, then toggle flashlight. You can of course select any of the other options available and you can enable stronger taps needed to prevent accidental activation. Android 13 has made tracking battery stats more comprehensible once again by reverting back to an old but good method. Now, when you go into battery settings and battery usage, you can check stats based on the phone's most recent charge to 100%, so no more stats clumped into a 24-hour window. Much better. Android 13 also allows you to view and control applications that run in the background. Simply swipe down to the quick settings menu and you'll be able to see how many apps are currently active. You can then check to see what apps those are and stop them if you'd like. This is especially useful if you want more control over how your phone utilizes RAM. If you have smart home devices, Android 13 makes it easier than ever to control them. So go into display settings, lock screen, then enable control from locked devices. This allows you to control all of the smart home products you've added to Google Home directly from your lock screen without having to unlock the phone at all. Sticking around in the display settings for a sec, head over to the dark theme settings, tap schedule, then tap turns on at bedtime. This one's for those that like using both the light and dark mode, and this is meant to be used with the bedtime mode of course, which you can conveniently customize directly from this page. The settings used for adjusting display and font size are now found on the same page with a preview of what it'll look like, making it easier than ever to tweak the look of the UI to fit your visual needs. You can bold the text and add contrast as well. For this next one, go into sound and vibration settings, then vibration and haptics. Here you can adjust the vibration intensity for notifications and most importantly, alarms. You can also adjust the haptics for UI touch interaction and other forms of media. Oh, and while you're here, if you'd like, you can enable the vibrate mode indication icon in the status bar for whenever your phone is in vibrate only mode. Now this was taken away in Android 12 and now it's back for those that want the icon present at all times when the mode is enabled. For Pixel 6 and 7 devices, Android 13 brings in spatial audio for wired and wireless headphones. For compatible Bluetooth devices, go to connected devices and enable spatial audio. Now for wired headphones, you can enable spatial audio in the sound and vibration settings. If your device doesn't have this, we should be seeing more Android 13 devices get this feature sometime this spring. For the more advanced users that would like to limit their device's network bandwidth, head over to Developer Options, scroll down to Network Download Rate Limit, and make your selection. This is useful if you'd like to lessen how much data your device chews through, especially if your data plan doesn't give you much breathing room. This one's interesting. Go into Accessibility Settings, scroll to the bottom, and enable Audio Description. With this, you'll be able to hear a description of what's going on in a scene of a movie or a show when audio isn't playing, as long as the media is supported, of course. If you're using a Pixel that has 1440p resolution by default, you can change that to 1080p if you'd like to save some extra battery. Head into display settings and select screen resolution. Then you can change it to 1080p. Now if your device doesn't have this, expect to see it show up sometime this spring. Gesture navigation has come a long way and it's gotten very good, but it still may not be everyone's cup of tea. If that's you and you want to go back to the three button menu, that is still around, currently living in system navigation under gestures, and on top of that, you can still activate Google Assistant with a long press of the home button. So that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. Hope you enjoyed. It's been Zach, and thanks for watching.